Thank you for the uh, opportunity to speak uh, here. I'll be presenting our work on looking at com complex uh, structural variation in cancer genomes using optical mapping and linked reads. Um, so my lab's interested in cancer genome uh, structure. Uh, classically, of course, the, some of the most famous targetable alterations in cancer are structural variants, namely protein coding, gene fusions. But we're particularly interested in how these complex rearrangements, which many of which land outside of the coding genome, can perturb uh, chromatin. And that's been demonstrated elegantly in certain cancer types like uh, certain leukemias or medulloblastomas, but hasn't been fully extrapolated to common cancers. And then looking at this molecular archaeology of mutational processes and particularly how rearrangement patterns could be driven by genome integrity defects or exogenous or endogenous uh, mutagens. Um, and I think one of the fundamental questions that we have when we're looking at complex structural variation in cancer is really what is an event? Um, and I think a lot of the sort of ways that we approach this are often over-reading or under-reading into the data. And really, let's see, can I point? I guess I can. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I think one of the key issues is a conceptual sort of challenge, which is we have to visualize a evolving cancer genome in cancer genomic coordinates, but what we have is data that's in reference genome coordinates. Um, and, and really, we have an incomplete uh, picture of that, and of course, that can lead to even uh, confusion when you have simple rearrangement events, like in this case, we have two nested tandem duplications, one inside the other, and if you look at the left part of the plot, we see this locus evolving, and if we project it onto reference genome coordinates, and I'll be using this kind of schematic throughout the talk, we can see this allele weaving its way around the reference genome coordinates on the right. If we sum all those intervals, that's the copy profile that we actually see. And you can see, lo and behold, that that late tandem duplication actually looks like a deletion. And this is just a simple vignette to show us that we can really be wrong about the etiology of a lot of the rearrangement patterns, both if we don't know the phase of these loci, um, and also if we don't look at these complex uh, rearrangement patterns in an integrated fashion. And of course, oops, I've got a lot of videos. Let's see if they play. Okay, so um, we've, we've built this nonlinear genome browser to understand a lot of the much more complex rearrangement events, such as templated insertion chains that can uh, connect multiple distant regions in the genome and affect both copy number and uh, junction patterns or adjacencies simultaneously. And building these graphs and sort of registering them with the actual raw data, whether it's Illumina read depth or complex contig patterns resulting from uh, long-range sequencing is really a, a key analytic challenge. So in this approach that we've applied to around 3,000 cancer genomes, which we call junction balance analysis or JABA, we begin with an input set of Illumina junctions and, and high density or binned read depth, and we infer these graphs on the bottom, which we call junction balance genome graphs using something called a mixed integer program, um, and annotate every one of these junctions with a copy number as well as one of these uh, intervals. And looking at the topology of these graphs across thousands of cancer genomes, we can start to infer patterns. So one of the key signals of this analysis is something that we don't think about very often when we look at cancer genomes and copy number, because we often think of uh, the copy number of a region or an interval, but junctions or rearranged alleles themselves also have copy number and you can actually infer them by bookkeeping uh, these copy states, namely just applying that intuition that every copy of every interval has a left or a right neighbor. So you can have uh, low junction copy junctions in high copy regions um, and uh, as well as uh, amplified junctions and of course the predictions that we're making re refer to the dosage of these rearranged alleles per cell. So looking at the topology of this junction copy number across thousands of uh, graphs, we can identify uh, patterns such as chromothripsis or chromoplexy or templated insertion chains, all of which have been previously identified, but we can also mine out novel uh, patterns, and th these are the ones I'll be discussing. And then looking forward, um, when we think about what's actually happening inside these rearranged genomes, we know that the cancer genome is not itself a graph, it's actually a, a compendium of linear 
and possibly circular alleles. But when we look at Illumina genomes, we're getting a very local view of the phase of those, and, and there's ambiguous sort of configurations of phase in which to those, low, those alleles can be arranged. But now integrating long-range data, whether linked reads, optical mapping, or long reads, we can deconvolve these alleles. And I posit that this is really the primary um, value added of, of a lot of these long-range platforms. So uh, surveying uh, our um, compendium of thousands of cancer genome graphs across over 30 cancer types, uh, we find these patterns of low, low junction copy number deletions, which we uh, have called rigma. Rigma means ditch or uh, rift, actually, uh, in Greek. Uh, and you can see that these uh, patterns of deletions result in a step wise progression of copy number in this region um, from two to uh, down to zero. And it, uh, you can look at the, uh, sorry, the top uh, right plot as an example of a rigma in contrast to a simple deletion. And these appear as statistical fluctuations in the uh, per sample junction patterns. And the t on the bottom left, you see that um, these rigma are highly enriched in uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma and Barrett's esophagus, which is not a cancer, but a premalignant um, lesion that that, uh, that has many of the features of uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma. Um, one of the features of, of RIGMA is that they uh, cluster in late replicating parts of the genome. They're enriched in fragile sites, and they occur in very long genes, genes that are larger than a megabase often. So we think this is the somatic footprint of genomic fragile sites, which uh, have been previously studied and thought to arise from replication transcription collisions in genes that take longer than a single cell cycle to transcribe. Rigma are not chromothripsis, so uh, we see, first of all, that they're much smaller in size rather than being tens or hundreds of megabases like chromothripsis. Rigma are on the size of a, me of a megabase. And when we try to reconstruct the linear allelic structure of these Rigma, um, looking at Illumina-based genome graphs, um, we see that it's very hard to place the junctions in cis, into a cis configuration, while with chromothripsis, we can often find a single allele that'll walk the entire span of that event. So we pursued this uh, hypothesis that rigma junctions are in trans using uh, linked read whole genome sequencing. So if you recall, uh, linked reads uh, utilize the droplet-based barcoding technology uh, of 10x made famous by single cell sequencing, but this was the original application which looks at high molecular weight fragments and tags every short read uh, with a barcode that tells you the long, uh, the high molecular weight fragment from which it arose. Um, moment of silence, you know, it's always a, a bit awkward when your entire talk and research program is based around the canceled uh, technology. Um, so, you know, luckily, uh, BioNano also came along, and I'll be showing some really interesting data from uh, optical mapping, which is not a sequencing technology, but it's, a, uh, it's based on a uh, approach for fluorescently tagging every instance of a seven-base motif in high molecular weight uh, DNA, and then as this DNA flows through a nanochannel, the patterns of intermolecule spacing can actually give you a signal from which you can assemble and map these uh, high molecular weight DNA. So what do RIGMA look like uh, with linked reads? Well, here uh, I'm showing um, uh, one locus in a lung adenocarcinoma cell line, NCIH838. On the bottom are the graphs that we derive from Illumina, and now we want to deconvolve that allelic structure into into uh, separate linear or possibly circular alleles, and we can use the linked reads to help us bias towards a, a, a solution that, that fits the data optimally. And you can see every row here, so these are th three alleles that span this locus with those junctions in cis. Every colored row co corresponds to the linked read support for every single one of these um, alleles, and within that plot, um, the small dots represent the reads. You can see we're zoomed out to a scale of uh, uh, a megabase or so, but the, the, the scale bar is about 100 KB. And we can deconvolve this allele, this locus, into, into three separate uh, alleles in trans. And you can see on top that we put two of those deletion junctions in cis, and actually they're supported, unfortunately, by pointer, I don't know how to use it, but um, you can see that there's actually scant evidence, oh, I actually put in a pointer here, uh, for phasing these two junctions in cis from, from these linked reads because they're about 40 KB on average in size. And we've actually tried to get these libraries larger, but it's actually been quite a challenge. So how do these loci look uh, with optical mapping? And, and we can actually get a very similar picture, but we, we can actually zoom out because the scale is much larger. So these uh, bio-nano optical maps are on the order of uh, here. You can see about 400 KB. 
Um, and what we're showing here is uh, the Illumina-derived graph, and actually we can derive a very similar graph just using these bio-nano consensus maps, which are essentially contigs of reconstructed um, loci. And we can get the, the very sa similar picture, namely that we see one allele with these two junctions in trans, and then three separate, uh, sorry, these, with these two junctions in cis on the same molecule, and these two additional uh, alleles that are independent, which have also acquired deletions. Uh, at this locus. One of the differences you'll see is that there's a little bit of the fine grain structure that we can detect with Illumina that's lost uh, in these bio nano maps, and part of that is really because they're, um, they do have the potential to kind of jump over some of these um, uh, finer scale structures. So one challenge analytically is how to integrate some of the, the um, uh, very uh, detailed information that we get from these Illumina uh, maps with the phase, the long range phase. And so why is it important that these junctions occur in trans? Well, actually, when we look at our Barrett's esophagus data generated in collaboration with Fred Hutch, uh, where uh, uh, about 80 patients underwent uh, serial sampling of, of uh, biopsies of uh, four separate lesions per patient, uh, we see that these rigma tend to be shared across two or more biopsies, while simple deletions tend to be private. So th we think this is a consistent with a model where these loci are undergoing repeat evolution on different alleles and suggests a, a gradual mutational process that's early in esophageal adenocarcinoma tumor genesis. Um, another pattern we've characterized we call pyrgo, this means tower in Greek, um, and it's kind of like the duplication analog of a rigma. We look at these low junction copy number hotspots that are uh, significant uh, in, in certain patients across the 3,000 that we've analyzed, and you can see how they appear uh, uh, differently relative to these simple duplications. Pyrgo cluster in um, ovarian and, and endometrial cancers, so they have a distinct tumor type distribution, analyzing their, uh, the, these patterns of duplication using optical mapping is really uh, essential because uh, the other part that I didn't uh, uh, mention with, with linked reads that we often lose is the order. And with these bio nano uh, molecules, we can actually, uh, uh, ha we have not only the, um, the sort of uh, evidence of contiguity, the grouping of, of distant loci, but we actually know what, what's the order that they occurred. So using that uh, mole molecule, single molecule support, we can reconstruct uh, the allele around, alleles around this uh, region, which uh, this is a, in an ovarian cancer cell line, which has a baseline copy number of six in this locus, um, but you can see goes all the way up to nine with this uh, nested structure, which we can explain with a single allele that has all of those uh, duplication junctions in cis in the background of an unrearranged allele that's uh, uh, amplified to a copy number of five. We in include this H3K27 acetyl track to show the enhancer uh, marks around this uh, locus. And, and part of the reason is we think that the biology of, of these uh, appear go events may be to bring together many enhancers in cysts and potentially have a, 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 an impact on, on gene regulation. And these peer go actually do cluster in super enhancers relative to simple duplications <clears throat> across our larger data set. Um, and one of the uh, hot spots is actually MIC. We have two examples here showing uh, these peer go uh, occurring uh, near, near MIC and overlapping almost directly with the super enhancer, in one case not touching MIC. So, so we think that this is a, a mechanism by which these uh, genomes um, can, can increase the expression of, of important genes. Um, a final pattern that we've uh, characterized is these uh, typhonus or genomic typhoons, which are distinct from double minutes and BFB um, cycles in that they are these nests of high copy foldback inversions that span tens of megabases. Uh, and here's a sarcoma, a dedifferentiated liposarcoma that has one of these patterns. The purple junctions are in, uh, are, represent these foldback inversions. So. Uh, uh, we're interested in these tephonas because they're actually much larger than these double uh, uh, minutes and BFB cycles. Um, they have a, uh, they're highly enriched in dedifferentiated liposarcomas, but not other types of sarcomas. And we see them uh, highly enriched in acromelanoma, which is a non-cutaneous melanoma that actually has responds to immunotherapy, but has no UV mutations. Um, so um, these tephonas amplified uh, known. Uh, oncogenes, so it's a mechanism for amplifying uh, known cancer genes, and we find that the junctions that comprise these events are enriched in a novel junction-centric hypermutation process um, that's a non-apobec uh, contagious, and you can see the high rate of, uh, of junction-centric hypermutation on the bottom left of this plot. 
So uh, examining these with optical mapping, we found a, non, uh, a small cell, lung cancer cell line, um, which shows a tifonus uh, on, uh, in, on the bottom. You can see the alumina-based reconstruction of this uh, region, which, uh, which is amplifying parts of chromosome 2 and chromosome 6, which contain uh, MCN and MIB, which are two genes uh, known uh, to be important for neuroendocrine cancer development. Um, and so when we uh, examine this uh, locus, we, we can build these bio-nano derived uh, uh, graphs that try to explain all the copy number through this locus using very similar principles to what we use in our Illumina analysis. Um, but now we have these contigs, these haplotypes, so we can build these haplotype, uh, partially phased haplotype graphs. And it's the allele that we reconstruct going through this locus is actually too large to plot in a single uh, in a single slide, so we can see how we can march along this allele beginning at chromosome six and, and, and explain nearly all the copy number through this locus uh, when we end up finally on chromosome two at the end. Um, so validating, uh, you know, one of the questions we had was, is this an extra chromosomal uh, 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 DNA or is this integrated? And we actually find that these tifonus, uh, in this case, in this uh, cell line, is very localized to, a, to a, um, a, a single chromosomal region. You can see the high degree of amplification, the hundreds of copies, um, in contrast to the location in the, in a, unrearranged cell line, and we can see that this uh, chromosome has uh, broken away from, uh, from chromosome, the chromosome 2 centromere. So we think that this is a, um, a, a genomic footprint of what people have previously characterized in cytogenetics as homo homogeneously staining um, regions. Um, one of the challenges of, of reconstructing these high-level amplicons using uh, linked reads is uh, we get a, still a relatively local picture of the uh, the structure, the altered structure, and here's a locus in HCC 1954 breast cancer cell line, which uh, we can show here a, a contact map of barcode sharing using linked reads, and you can see that the local view that we get here doesn't really uh, allow us to phase the, the, the structure of this rearranged allele. So um, we've worked with uh, Oxford Nanopore Technologies, a great collaboration with the folks here in Cicel Jewel um, to develop uh, a technology called Poor C, and there's a poster uh, uh, in the poster session where we uh, adapt a protocol very similar to high C, but, uh, but the output of it are these multi-way chromatin concatamers that result from uh, a restriction digest and, and, and uh, proximity ligation and give us a multi uh, sort of high order view of chromatin structure, but also allow us to reconstruct uh, complex rearranged alleles. So you can see, we, we show this view here in which we're actually looking at these concatamers that result from, a, from, from poor C as linked reads. Every row here is a different concatamer. Every dot represents a single alignment of the monomers of that concatamer. And we're getting megabase level contiguity, which allows us to put these alleles uh, together on a single um, uh, uh, or put these regions together on a single molecule, and we can validate these uh, patterns uh, using FISH with three separate uh, probes. So in conclusion, we've identified three novel patterns of complex rearrangement across 3,000 cancer genomes. These RIGMA uh, contain junctions and trans consistent with the gradual accumulation of these deletions at fragile sites. Uh, PIRGO are nested cyst duplications consistent with uh, enhancer amplification and these tifonus uh, co-amplify uh, oncogenes through these clusters of fallback inversions and we can get uh, uh, insight into megabase scale structure using these poor C concatamers. I'll skip over the future ongoing work, uh, acknowledge the folks who worked on this uh, in my lab, uh, collaborators at BioNano and ONT. And uh, if you're interested in this work, please contact me. There are uh, postdoc positions available in the lab. Thanks.